Modern companies cannot exist without software. It is ingrained in the fabric of our societies and everything depends on it to operate. From critical infrastructure, to communication, to transportation, to entertainment. Everything is organized and controlled by this software layer. While intangible, software has become a critical and extremely valuable asset for any organization using it to operate in day-to-day -day society. But the software realm is governed by licensing models and rules designed to tell you under which conditions the software can be used. Simply put, licensing is the legal agreement that governs the use of software. According to data from various research firms, the global software market was valued at around $1 trillion in 2020, and a good part of it is enterprise software which is high value in terms of cost and high risk in terms of compliance. Imagine the complexity of managing all that. But how did we get here, and why is licensing so important? The Statute of Anne, also known as the Copyright Act of 1710, was the first copyright law in the English-speaking world. It was passed by the British Parliament and went into effect on April 10, 1710. The law granted authors the exclusive right to publish and sell their work for a period of 14 years, with the option to renew for an additional 14 years if the author was still alive. The reasoning behind the Statute of Anne was to balance the interests of authors, who were seen as the creators of valuable works, with the interests of the public, who would benefit from the dissemination of those works. The law aimed to encourage the production of new literary works. It also aimed to address the issue of book piracy, which was a prevalent problem in the time of the statute being passed. The Statute of Anne was seen as a way to provide legal protection for authors and publishers, and to help them to earn a living from their work, while also promoting the spread of knowledge and the advancement of learning. This later evolved and expanded to other industries all over the world. The reasoning was simple. If there's no incentive to create original works or innovate, there's going to be less and less innovation. Society starts degrading. In a world where intellectual property work can be freely copied and distributed and sold without consequence, there is little to be gained as a creator. There are several different types of intellectual property. The main types include copyright law. This protects original works of authorship, such as literature, music, and art. Patent law. Patent law protects inventions and discoveries, such as new products or processes. Trademark. Protects branding and logos that are used to identify and distinguish goods and services. Trade secret. Trade secret law protects confidential business information, such as formulas, recipes, and methods. Industrial design law. Industrial design law protects the visual design of objects that are not purely functional. Plant variety protection law. This law protects new varieties of plants and many more. Software licensing falls under the category of copyright law, as software is considered to be a type of literary work. The first software license dates back to the early days of computer technology, when software was primarily developed and used by government organizations and large corporations. One ex-IBM engineer, W.S. Humphrey, recounts his journey in a memoir. He remembers being a part of the process of software unbundling. In the early days, hardware and software were distributed as one, and software was not yet recognized as a protectable subject matter in the United States, being unfixed and intangible. But the task force saw the potential for copyright as a form of protection for this new and unique separation. The challenge was that it was vulnerable to the concept of exhaustion through sales of the software. This realization led to the creation of a contractual mechanism to ensure that IBM users would be licensees of software and not owners. In this way, they could protect this new and intangible subject matter. In the 1970s and 1980s, as personal computers became more widely available, the software industry began to evolve and expand. Software companies started to develop and market their own software for these personal computers, and licensing agreements became more complex. This is when the concept of proprietary software emerged in the mainstream, where the source code was kept secret and the software was sold commercially. Next, 
the Free Software Foundation introduced the concept of open source software, which made the source code of a software freely available to anyone. This led to the development of the open source software movement and the creation of the GNU General Public License. In the early 2000s, software vendors introduced user-based subscription licensing and software as a service, which helped to generate regular and consistent revenue whilst reducing piracy and non-compliance. Over time, vendors have been using different methods to restrict users from installing unlicensed or unauthorized copies of their software. However, most of these measures were hacked, and the ability to stop overutilization and non-compliant use of software continues to this day. This is where software audits come in and organizations realize the importance of managing their software compliance. Software vendors rely on the revenue generated from licensing their software to sustain their business, and therefore, it is essential that they protect their intellectual property. However, the relationship between software vendors and users has become increasingly fraught over the years. On one hand, end-user companies have complained about aggressive licensing practices and audits by vendors, which they believe are designed to extract more revenue from them. This can include unexpected costs for additional licenses, audits that are costly and time-consuming, and penalties for non-compliance. On the other hand, software vendors have expressed frustration with the high rate of non-compliance among their customers. They believe that many users are using software without proper licenses, or using the software in ways that are not covered by their licenses. This can lead to significant losses in revenue for the vendors, and it can also undermine the value of their intellectual property. It is important to have visibility into the software licenses that are being used across the organization and to ensure compliance with licensing agreements. It's also important to have a system in place to track and manage the procurement, deployment, and retirement of software licenses. This not only helps with cost savings, but also ensures that the organization is utilizing its resources effectively. Thus, the critical practice of software asset management was born which continues to evolve and develop to this day. Licenseware hopes you enjoyed this short documentary style video. As it's our first one, please like, subscribe, and comment to ensure we know to make more in the future. Thank you.